podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello and welcome, everyone. We are so excited for this live event today. Oh my gosh. My name is Norma Jean Blanke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean, and we are joined today by Kira Deneen of DNA Today. We're going to talk all about DNA. Oh. Woo! Thank you for bringing me on, Norma Jean. This is exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to talk about science and DNA and your podcast and I mean, really how you've grown the show. It's just going to be so incredible. So for everybody out there, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. I'm going to read our brief intro and then we will get started for today. Welcome everyone. Welcome back to Podbean's Storytelling Podcast Week and Podcasting Smarter live series. This is our live event for November, Unlocking Success, how DNA Today grew to over 100K, our live interview event v- featuring Kira Deneen, creator, host, and producer of the DNA Today podcast. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Storytelling Podcast Week and Podbean has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and storytellers from scripted fiction and nonfiction podcasts from across our world and our imaginations. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. We are brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we'll jump in. Hi, Kira. How's it going? It's going great. How are you doing, NJ? Good. I am just so excited to chat with you today because... DNA Today is a really cool show. First of all, it's a podcast on genetics, right? And we're going to talk about, you know, genetics as a whole and some of the nuances and kind of break down some of the terms. Because when people hear, you know, DNA and genetics, it can be kind of intimidating. But you've had this show for a really long time, right? You started the show in 2012. And in 2014, it became a radio show. And you've produced over 225 episodes. So this is really your baby. It's your show. Tell us a little bit about how the podcast got started because you came from, you know, really it's been over 10 years and you won uh, the science and medicine, you won at the science and medicine podcast awards in 2020, 2021 and 2022. (laughs) So tell us a little bit about your journey of starting the podcast. And then I want to talk about how you built the show, audience development, monetization, and a lot of the nuances of having a podcast on DNA and genetics. Yes. Thank you. Wow. That was a great intro, NJ. So um, it's it's been a journey. Like it, I started podcasting in high school. Um, so kind of figuring out what I was doing with a, a different show about the Hunger Games. Um, so it just totally shows how nerdy I am in multiple areas of life, not just genetics. And so, you know, started the show, as you said, in 2012. And so we kind of celebrated our, you know, my, as you said, my baby's 11th birthday. So, um, <laughs> you know, preteen now my uh, shows. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been really fun and it's been interesting just as I've seen podcasting change. It used to be, I'd go and, you know, tell people, oh, you know, I have a podcast and they're like, oh, what's a podcast? And then I'm like, okay, it's like an internet radio show. And then 2014 hit with Serial Podcast. And then people knew what a podcast was. I'm sure you experienced the same thing. And then I was like, oh, I don't have to explain what a podcast is anymore. So, you know, that was was a very exciting development in podcasting and how it really affected just, you know, mainstream media and just, you know, what people knew, household terms. Um, But it's been such a fun way for me to learn genetics of starting in high school. You know, fast forward to today, 11 years later, um, I have a master's in genetics. I, I work as a genetic counselor. Um, and so being able to have this show kind of, I've learned along with my audience, which has been really exciting because in high school, obviously I didn't know a lot. Like I was learning with people. So it's definitely changed a lot in the last 11 yeah. years, but it's just been so exciting looking back on, um, we hit 250 episodes recently and, and so it's just, it's been remarkable. Um, it's, it's, n- there's nothing else that's been like it in my life of just having the show. Yeah, absolutely. And 
We're going to play a clip in a little bit and we're going to talk about, you know, the the content of the show and how great it is and some of the guests you've had on um, and memorable episodes, things like that. But you've also been able to really kind of grow, like you said, the audience is along with you on this journey, right? From high school of being like a genetics nerd, like we all are kind of secretly, oh, I love science and how do genes work and how does DNA work and all that stuff. Um, and so it's interesting, you know, really as you've learned along your journey, you've taken the audience with you. And that also means that you've you've grown the show audience-wise, but you've also grown it with sponsorship as well, right? So you've brought some of the sponsors along with you. So, you know, we're here to talk about how kind of you got to 100K. And I'd love to hear first about like kind of your monetization strategy, what it's been like. And now you're utilizing a lot of the advertising that we have built in here at Podbean with Pod Ads, some of the DAI. And so I'd love to hear also how you're building that into your overall strategy with advertisers as well. Yeah. So I have to say right off the bat, um, switching over my hosting to Podbean, um, which I did around May of this year. And I mean, it it was just such a shift in what we've been able to offer sponsors with the DAI. And to explain that for people that are a little bit newer to that, um, it's, called, it's dynamic ad insertion. So you can have baked in ads, which is what we did for years and years and years, where I have the file of the episode, the interview, and then I find a spot maybe in, you know, at the beginning and the end, but also like, it's always nice to have what's called a mid roll in the middle. Right. And then you kind of have an ad break. And so, you know, you put your little transition music in and you put that advertisement right in the right interview in there. file. Right. So it's baked in, it's, it's in there. There's no taking it out. Um, But there's a lot of downsides to that in terms of statistics. So once we switch to dynamic ad insertion, DAI, as we're going to say, we were actually, we just, I I record basically all of our ads. So I, I work with the sponsors to create an ad script that I feel like is true to my voice, but also brings in their, their, their points for their brand and and everything so that we work together on that. And then I record it sitting right here and I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's talk about, let's say, Sarepta Therapeutics and what they have to offer. And then instead of putting that into the interview file of that MP3, MP4, then we can upload it directly to Podbean. And then what's awesome about a show like mine that has over 250 episodes is when people go to listen to you know, let's say some people are like, let me listen to the first episode. Ooh, I cringe when I hear that. But when people do that and they're listening to it, you know, it's November, they might hear things that are a little bit more tailored to like maybe like the holidays or something, right? Even though that episode came out 10 years ago in February. So, and we're also able to track all that. So yeah, we'll get, you know, a a good amount of downloads on a new episode. But when you compare that to what everybody's listening to all of our back catalog, yeah, we're able to utilize that and then offer that to sponsors and be like, hey, instead of just whatever this episode ends up getting and like you're getting people that are listening to this in the future, especially like when I'm promoting live events and um, like classes that are upcoming, like genetics classes, uh, Johns Hopkins, Sarah Lawrence, um, University of Washington or some of our sponsors there. And and it, it's huge to be able to be like, oh, well, why don't we just like give you 10,000 impressions, you know, in the next two weeks? Like that is, I mean, we've just been able to offer so much more. And this is something that I was not able to do when I had my janky setup of, you know, love Squarespace, been using them for over 10 years. Um, But I basically was taking my RSS feed from Squarespace, running it through a podcast analytics service, and then giving that to the podcast platforms, which really limited, like, am I even getting all the statistics? Like, you know, I had an issue where it wasn't capturing Spotify. Oh my gosh, Spotify is the number two. So, you know, Podbean, I've had no issues. And right when I switched over, my downloads went up because then it starts actually accumulating all of them. And it's an accurate number. So there's all kinds of things that I've just been so, so pleased with Podbean. And then you guys reached out um, to do this. And I was like, oh my gosh, like how much can I talk about? What I love it? And you guys are like, <laughs> we we're not going like, to limit you. Right? Yeah. Like, I mean, like, uh, let's talk about genetics, but yes, absolutely. Advertising. No. Yes. I'm like, and- please let me talk about DAI and how it has changed the game. And, and not a, let, let me just geek out for one more minute. No, about please. This. I mean, cause <laughs> the technology is very cool. Right. And we oh, talk it's about so this, cool. We talk about this a lot at Podbean, right? So 
you know, with your show. And, and like you said, I, I interview podcasters all day, every day. And yep. if you ask anybody to go back and listen to their first episode, they're going to be like, you Ooh. cannot pay me enough. They're like I, I it's peak. And my cringe. voice is up here. Cause I'm 17. <laughs> and- <laughs> but at the same time, right. Your audience is still listening to those episodes. And so when you have that depth of a library within your, within your podcast, right. You have episodes built up when people like your show. And of course, every podcaster is also a podcast listener. So of course, yes. when you find a show you like, you're going to binge, right? You're going to be like, Oh, uh, let me just find that's my weekend right I- there. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh, did I find something I like? This is my personality now. Yeah. hundred percent. And so, you know, I think it's also giving your audience an opportunity to binge those past episodes, but hey, learn about live events, get updated messages from sponsors and not feel like, oh, hey, actually, you know, this episode is promoting uh, a live event or a product from uh, 10 years ago, eight years ago. That's no longer available. That's no longer available. Yeah. It's no longer the discount doesn't apply. There's, you know, the link isn't there. There's lots of things there where it feels like, okay, it just detracts from the experience and what dynamic insert dynamic ad insertion does. And, you know, that's why it's DAI dynamic ad insertion is because it dynamically inserts the ad into the timestamp that you select. Right. So what you can do as a podcaster is you can go in, right? So let's say, Hey, actually I want the ad to play at five minutes, 46 seconds, right? That's when I pause for a second and it's a really natural spot, you know? And then you can upload the ad separately and insert it directly so you have control as a creator. And it's something where it's so cool because, you know, it's not interrupting the show and you can serve fresh ads. So your entire back catalog then becomes a better listening experience for your audience and a way better opportunity to monetize because what a lot of podcasters when they're starting out their journey may not always bring their front attention to is that as you continue your podcasting journey, most of your content is going to be evergreen unless you're a new show or something that isn't going to stay interesting or current. Um, it's really cool to see how your past episodes perform. And every podcaster has those couple of episodes that are like really outstanding from years back, right? And they're like, oh Definitely. yeah, this one was really popular. And I'm sure, you know, for those of you out there who are listeners or podcasters who are just starting to experience this like depth of catalogs uh, thing that happens... It's really interesting because I'm sure you've been listening to a podcast where they're like, oh, this was one of our most popular episodes. We're going to re-release it because it's been so great. And so a lot of podcasters do that too because they want, you know, maybe the newer audience to find that episode because they know it's performing even years later. It's still performing with significant downloads within their catalog of episodes. It's very cool. Yeah, no, it it really is. And I think especially as you grow as a podcast and you can get bigger name guests on, then people are going to search for those guests. Like, you know, I haven't had anything as, you know, as big as like Jennifer Lawrence, let's say, but you know, I'm a fan of Jennifer Lawrence. So when I go into, you know, I usually use Spotify to listen to a podcast Mm -hmm. now and, you know, I type in Jennifer Lawrence and see like, oh, what shows has she been on? Like, let me just add them to my queue. Right. And then that's how I'm discovering a new show, you know, but also people that are smaller than that, like, you know, you know, big podcasters that I follow, like Andrew Sims is one that I, I, I've followed since 2008. Like he's yeah. awesome. Um, he's kind of become a mentor to me, which is amazing. I can't believe I've even met him in person. <laughs> um, but you know, I like seeing like, Oh, what other shows does he end up on? Like, I want to listen to that. So, you know, I, I think that's such a great thing. Like we were really excited to have, um, Maury Povich on recently. You were the father, you were not the father. Yes. Um, because that's totally that was, genetics. That's amazing. Yes, right. <laughs> like, so we, I connected with NBC and then they were like, yeah, like, um, I, I live in the town, the city that he records in, in Stanford, Connecticut. So, you know, I can, I can walk over to the studio and they were like, yeah, let's do an episode on paternity testing. I was like, wait, that totally makes sense. Yes. It, I would love A hundred percent makes sense. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, we totally it's, geeked it's a very, out like, over it. like 90s moment. Right. Of, yes. Right. Yes. And, and that was like daytime TV, Monday through Friday. I right? mean, from my experience, I can remember like being home with the flu as a kid and having I daytime was say, TV sick days. on. 
Yeah. It's definitely like a sick day show that yeah. was always and this is like pre-social media, like pre-streaming. Yes. So you really had to watch what was on the TV. Definitely. And so definitely. I think so many people, you know, have watched those episodes of his show. And and yet it relates to your subject matter and your topic, which is genetics and DNA. And I think that's such a fantastic example, right? Because you know, we always talk at Podbean about getting really clear on your niche, right? About who wants to hear about what you're talking about. but And then from there, you can diversify within your niche endlessly, right? So when you think of a podcast about DNA and genetics and how our DNA works, you're not necessarily thinking about daytime TV from the 90s and paternity tests and the drama of a daytime TV talk show, no. but it totally applies. Yeah. No, and, and I really agree with that. When I, I do some podcast consulting and helping people start their podcast and like teaching them, or sometimes they're like, I don't want to learn all these things. I want to just hire you to do this part or something. But that is that is a thing that I say when we're workshopping. They say to me, oh, I, I want, you know, a, a podcast about this topic. And I'm like, yeah, let's dive a little deeper and get that a little bit more niche, as you said, because you want to be able to have that balance, but you don't want to go too niche. So I think like for me, like I could have a science podcast, right? But I'm like, mm, let me go a little deeper. I'm going to do genetics, which is which yeah. is where my interest lies. But instead, I could have done a genetic counseling podcast, which is like my my uh, other career or kind of a, an aspect of my career. But I was like, then eh, that's a little too niche. Let me, you know, genetics is a perfect balance between, you know, being niche enough without going too deep. Um, so I think it's kind of, it's finding that spot for people that are listening that are kind of developing that podcast and like, okay, they're, they're doing their homework. They're trying to find a hosting platform that's going to work because I wish from the beginning I could have been with Podbean and all of my statistics of my 11 years would all be here. And, you know, but, but it's, it's great because now I have this moving forward. Um, but yeah, if I could go back, I would have, I would have transitioned to you guys earlier. So, um, you know. You live and learn, oh, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's great to hear. And, you know, we we do also offer, you know, migration. If anybody's looking to migrate, we have links about how to do that really easily. Um, but I also want to go back to something you said about host read ads, right? So this is also a really important aspect as an independent podcaster when you're working with advertisers and you're working with companies that are really supporting your show, right? What are some things that, I mean, obviously host read and that's for everybody out there. Host read means the host reads the ad. That's what that means. And so usually the host will read the ad and it'll be dynamically inserted. And it really, it, you know, host red ads perform well for a variety of reasons. The first is because it enhances, you know, it's, it's a bridge from the content of the podcast to the advertiser um, message because it's the same voice, literally. Yes. But it's also, you know, there's, there's a psychological also facet of host red ads because you're saying, hey, I really like these, this product. I really like this brand. I really like these people. They're supporting us. They're supporting this listening experience. You know, this is a product I use. You know, I wouldn't endorse it unless I actually used it. That's key. I just want you to give it a chance, right? And so I think it's also bringing your audience into that experience as well. You know, so even subconsciously, it's it's introducing the brand or the product in a way that allows your audience to be more excited about it and feel like there's more trust there for sure. Yes. Yeah. So, I, I I think that's big. Absolutely. And in, in addition to host red, you know, is there any kind of packaging or work that you do with your sponsors in terms of what you create for them in terms of value from the podcast? Yeah. So as you were saying, like host red ads are awesome. I, I think you really have to offer that. Um, that's how we started. Like in, I think, uh, I gotta do my math real quick around 2018, I think is when we started with like monetization. Um, that wasn't my goal at the beginning. My goal at the beginning was meet people in genetics so I can start developing this career of mine. It was a selfish reason. Um, but that's also a valid reason. I do have but to it's say a valid reason. Podcasts have many different reasons. And so for everybody out there who's, you know, you have a podcast because you want to network in a certain field or you want to learn more about a certain field, you want to interview people, you want to share information, you want to create a funnel for your business. There are so many mm -hmm. different applications for podcasting. It's not direct advertising. It, it It is for a lot of podcasters, but it doesn't always start out that way. And yeah. podcasters, I have to say, like, you know, we have all these conversations about ads and at Podbean, we really focus on podcaster 
education on monetization because nobody gets into podcasting as a creator to be an expert in podcast ads. You get in because you love creating a podcast about your subject. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a big part. And I think a lot of shows that have started with a reason other than monetization are just tend to be really high quality shows where the people involved in the show are just so passionate about it. And then they're like, Hey, we can actually like either recoup our costs or we can actually make a profit from the show. Eventually. I think, I think that's some of the best setups, but once we kind of started with the ads, I was like, okay, I presented to an entrepreneur group that I'm in and you know, they gave me a little ad- advice of like, you should be offering packages because we, we, as you said, right when you said packages, I'm like, yes, people listening, offer packages. Yes. Um, because then you can really say, how are all the ways that I can introduce your brand to my audience in, in very natural ways? So one of the things that we also do on the show, it, it was our next aspect of what are we offering, is to invite people for a full episode interview. So just kind of like this, right? But if we're talking about a topic in genetics, um, let's say something called whole genome sequencing, where it's a genetic test where we are reading through someone's all of their genetic information, all of their DNA and analyzing that. So there's some companies, many companies that have started offering this either that you can get through your healthcare provider or that you can spit and send it off in the mail. So, you know, for these kind of shows, I could be like, all right, let's talk about whole genome sequencing and bring you on as the expert and talk about like what we can learn from it, what we can't. And then we kind of sprinkle in how the company is doing that. And like, okay, well, when people order from you guys, like how, like what, what's different than than other companies at the end of the show, we'll be like, oh, if you guys actually do want to check it out from them, like, let's say it's a direct consumer company then you can use code DNA today. We use the same promo code for every single thing. It never changes. That is a great tip. That is a very good tip because people will, if it's the same code, they'll literally, if they can't remember the code, you know, it's It's hard for your sponsors and they're going to lose out and you're going to lose out. And I'm going to lose out. Exactly. And so make, that is a great, that's a really great tip. Making sure, you know, because sometimes it's, you know, let's say, you know, let's use DNA today as an example. It could be DNA today, 10 DNA today, mm-hmm. Labor Day, DNA today, uh, happy new year, DNA today, holidays. Yep. N- nobody's going to remember that. No, right? they won't. Make sure you make it as easy for your listeners and for your sponsors as possible. That's a fantastic tip. Yep. Yeah. So it's literally the name of our show and it's easy to spell. I'm someone that really yes. struggles with spelling, right? I am glad I was born in the era of spell check, but don't do anything that's hard to spell for people yeah. like me and easy to remember. It's like, oh, where, where did I hear this? Oh, it was on DNA Today. Or if you if you get to a point where people are listening to you enough and you have enough sponsors, you might just be like, oh, maybe DNA Today is a code. They may not even have heard of your ad, right? But they just know you're a leader in the space and they're like, let me just try it. How many, how many times have you been in a checkout thing and you're like, oh let yeah, just try a couple. Totally. Summer 10, <laughs> um, you know, new year, like you said, kind of like a lot of the promo codes are right. similar. New year's right? 10 or whatever. Right. Exactly. And Give I, me I 20. Love, yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. You know, especially if you are a leader within your niche and you're interviewing people who obviously have the subject matter expertise, they're sequencing whole genomes. They are yeah. the people you want to talk to. So yep. it makes sense to bring them on and yeah. to hear how they're doing it and, and you know, how literally how they're sequencing DNA. It's wild. And so I think it, it also offers an opportunity for, for your sponsors to be seen not as a product, but also from a branded standpoint as subject matter experts themselves as well. Yes. And that's huge, especially in my field, right? Like yeah. you want to be seen as an expert and be well-spoken and, and people want to learn about this technology. And so that, that was our next offer of, of mm-hmm. in this monetization space. And and even within that, I can break it down to like, okay, yes, you're coming on the show for an episode and interview. But I break that down and I'm even looking at my sponsor packages right now. Like I say full episode interview, like 25 minutes so that I'm like, I know minimum it's 25. They'll probably be happy. It'll end up being 30. So I do short episodes because it's genetics. I don't think people want to listen. It's a lot lot of science at once. It's a lot of science. I mean, you break it down. It's super accessible, but also 
if people want more, they can listen to two episodes. You've got 250. Exactly. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have some special episodes that go an hour or whatever. But um, and then I say, you know, OK, it's also going to be a video interview. So it's going to be available on YouTube. I'm going to curate interview questions ahead of time that you get to look at. I don't want people to write out their answers. Oh, I, I cringe when I see that. Bullet yeah. points is great. But really, like like we were even doing prior to going live here of like, hey, we're going to talk about this, this. And I'm like, OK, can I answer that? Yes, yes, yes. So that's kind of what I'm looking for but that we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, and then also social media, right? Every yes. podcast, if you don't have social media, get on it, start doing this as you're listening, but saying, you know, we're going to curate, um, you know, a clip of the show. And then we're going to be posting that. We're going to tag you. We're going to add you as a collaborator on Instagram, like all these different things, right? So things that you would probably already do for your episodes and for just to promote your show, but include that in the sponsorship packages. They have value. So they can yes. see like, oh, wow, this is everything we're getting out of it. And sometimes I'll have sponsors say, well, is it less if I take these things out? And I'm like, no, it, it kind of is what it is. Because what, I'm not going to promote their episode? Like, no, like I want to promote their episode. Um, but you can do things like, you know, we have a, a sponsorship um, page, dnapodcast.com slash sponsors, which I also mention in DAI ads because sometimes the links are so long. And I used to say link in the show notes. But when you have dynamic ad insertion, you don't know what episode they're listening to. Right. So it's nice to have a catch all page where you can have all your information on all your ads. So I also recommend that because then you can say quick. Yeah. And you know, you could say the link, but sometimes people forget. But if you say the same, um, yeah. podcast the specific same url link. dna yeah. today backslash sponsors done yeah and that's yeah, easy they're to remember, remember oh what was the sponsor dna today sponsor yeah. dna today right or if it they're like sense. i heard a sponsor and i can't remember who it was they could just scroll through the page until they happen upon it right so yeah. i think that also is is great but i include that in the sponsor packages and i say website you're gonna feature, be on the sponsor page right yeah, you're gonna be featured yeah for sure but it's it's also a way of you know i think in terms of me being in this space you know not everybody's gonna have this conundrum but ethically, I think we should say who is sponsoring us. And, and all, you know, now that I say it out loud, I think all, all podcasts should do that. But it's also a way of being transparent. These people have supported the show. We are wanting to give them this space, but also for listeners to be like, wait, did they pay to be on the show? Like, yeah, you can scroll through these, the people that have paid us and are supporting the show. Um, yeah. And also, you're not saying you're not, not being you know, critical or asking important questions, but they're getting yeah. the attention, which is right. that's the currency. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would say the last thing that we currently offer um, is a spot in our newsletter. So we yes. send out an email blast. Um, and a lot of these services are quite expensive. I have to say, I think that's when it comes down to our expenses as a podcast, now that we have all the equipment and, you know, that kind of stuff, but monthly expenses, um, man, the, the email services, that, that's a lot, depending on how many um, subscribers you have for emails. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll have, depending on which package they do, some include a little feature in our monthly newsletter. Um, and you know, that's, go, that's going out to thousands of people and it's not just thousands of random people. It's thousands of people in the genetic space. So people, it's all very people targeted. Who are interested and care about it, DNA. Exactly. And yes. And I think for people listening that don't have a huge following, like I'm, I'm very proud of, of what we've accumulated to after 11 years, but you know, years ago, like we, we did not, I wouldn't say we were a big podcast. Um, and I am an indie podcast. Like what you're looking at is my studio. Right. Um, but it's great because when it comes to offering this, if you have a niche podcast, you want to go for sponsors that are within that niche. Like I, I have tested out and done some sponsorships with like for Symbatic, which is a coffee company. Cause again, as, as you said at the top of the show, you want to try it. So if, if a sponsor approaches me and they're like, Hey, do you want to promote this coffee? I said, well, I got to try it, make sure I like it. And right. then I was like, Oh, actually this is awesome. I, I like bold coffee. So I'm like, it's gotta be bold. Um, you know, and it's gotta have this, that, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, yeah, I like this. Like then let's proceed. Um, and sponsorships or sponsors like that will send you a free little test kit, whatever. Um, but you know, when it comes to that, you know, I, we weren't able to charge as much because there's the not audience, a you're not a podcast on coffee. Exactly. If I was a yeah. podcast on coffee, oh my goodness. Yes. But these genetic <laughs> right. podcasts, they, they genetic podcasts, <laughs> the sponsors coming on my genetics podcast, 
you know, they're getting the people they're trying to reach. And I think one way that I phrase it to people is there a lot of these companies are not used to advertising on podcasts, right? This is new for them. Yeah. So I'm kind of introducing them to, all right, this is how this works. And what's interesting and what I've kind of learned over the years of how to phrase things is that I'll say, hey, look, when you go to an in-person conference, which we still very much do in my field, you know, it's very exciting. We had, we had one last month in Chicago. It was great in October. And so I said, if you get an audience of a couple hundred people that actually decide to come into your panel and stuff, you'd be like, wow, this is great. Imagine thousands, tens of thousands of people that are listening. You'd be like, whoa, we're filling up this small stadium, right? So you start phrasing things that way. And they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Because these are the people we want to reach. So I think just in terms of when I give people advice on, on starting that monetization process, even if you have 500 people that that's your average amount that listen to an episode, or, or if you're doing DAI with Podbean and you're utilizing your back catalog, you know, if you're only able to offer like a thousand impressions or something, um, or 500 or something like that, you can say, but imagine you're in an, you're in a theater, you got 500 people listening to you that are your people that you're trying to reach. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely. And especially, you know, as a podcaster, that's not, you know, you're not an interview show. It's a very specific topic, right? And so for podcasters out there, don't feel like, you know, your topic is too niche. There are sponsors for your topic. Yes, there are. Yes. I think there, there is a happy medium, but you could go super niche. And then those sponsors will be like, hey, yeah, you are the podcast about, you know, um, cycling in mountains or something super specific, right? <laughs> I think there's quite a few podcasts on cycling in mountains. I was going to say, maybe, maybe that's not a great, great example, but no, you know, no, but, some kind of but thing. It's an, important, it's an important thing to remember, right? Especially, you know, with brands that are looking to reach a specific audience. If your podcast reaches a specific audience, that has tremendous value to brands. Don't undersell yourself, right? And I love what you said. I just want to reiterate about that packaging because We've talked about this a lot at Podbean and it's so important. All of the marketing that you do for your podcast has value to your sponsors, has value to brands, right? So like you said, first of all, DAI host red personally recommended the personally recommending the product or service. You've got that code in there, DNA today, right? A, same code across the board. Brilliant. Number two, on that code, you're having a website, right? So that's the second thing, your sponsor website. Number three, socials, right? If you're promoting the podcast episode, you're already going to be doing that work. You might as well have sponsor support for it. Like you said, you're tagging those brands as collaborators on the clips. You're sharing and, and tagging them on the posts, that kind of thing. Additionally, newsletter features are so valuable, right? Like you were saying, everybody who subscribes to your newsletter, and this is the interesting thing, right? People who read the newsletter every week or every two weeks, whenever the newsletter comes out, they may not have a chance to listen to every episode. So it's another touch point for your sponsor, right? And having that feature of, hey, we're sending this out to the top, you know, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 people that are really interested in genetics. They even subscribe to this genetics podcast and they're like geeking out on genetics every week. It's important. It's really important for them to have that touch point. So don't underestimate the value that you're providing as a as a creator in terms of building out those packages and offer a couple options, right? Like how many package options do you have? Uh, let me do math. We have eight different options. Some are just okay. advertisements where they don't have a full episode interview. Yeah. So that's three different packages there of just like, do you want, you know, uh, yeah. bronze, silver, gold, Right, and then exactly. we have but the three, interview. Exactly. Options. So three is three. If you're offering, right, the interview is a whole separate thing. I didn't even get back to that, which is huge value because not only is the is the brand and their expertise being featured, but they can repurpose that content. You can also negotiate to give them oh, that I do. content afterward. Exactly. They're like, and do so, you mind if we, I'm like, please. Yes. I was like, yes. you can even edit a clip that I'm not in. Like, yes, go for you it. Can edit Part a clip of what that you're I'm paying for is the you production. Can, you can pay extra for that content. Yeah, they can pay extra to own that content after mm -hmm. after it's been on your show. That's Who knows? They that, might use it in a commercial or exactly. something. Like, there's, oh, our there's CEO so had a really good line there that felt so natural because you were interviewing them, and we didn't just stick our, our CEO in front of the camera and say, "Hey, read this line." It's not going to come out as good, especially for someone that's not in broadcasting. Exactly, exactly. So that it's a really important point, and 
content creators talk about this, right? There is value. If they had to create that kind of content themselves, it would cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, right? They'd have to hire yeah. a video crew. They'd have to have someone produce it. They'd have to hire their own host. And you're offering them that value. So if you're going to provide them with some of that content afterward, package that up, right? Package that with an ad. Package that with a newsletter feature. Package that with social media promo. Package that with a code. Package that with a website sponsor feature. These are all really important things that you can... And like you said, you have eight packages. Three of them are just purely ads. You can mix and match and find the, the right fit for your advertisers, for yeah. sure. And and you can say, hey, if you're buying three packages, we're going to give you X percent off or something. Or, hey, you've you've been a sponsor for a long time. Like some people have been sponsoring us for years and years. Yeah. And, and it's like, you know, thank you. Like if it wasn't for you kind of giving us a start, because honestly, landing the first sponsor is the hardest. It's the hardest. Once, once you get that first couple then it just kind of starts rolling and it's like, whoa. So, and it's just so exciting. And I think the other thing that I know we're saying social media and in a clip of the show, also giveaways. So we do giveaways all the time on the show and listeners love it. Yep. And then there, and obviously we have all entered a social media giveaway, right? You're not listening totally. to this live stream <laughs> without being involved in social. So, you know, you're tagging friends and all that. You're sharing it on your stories. You're, you're retweeting it or whatever we're saying now and that it's called X. So, you know, all this stuff, but a giveaway, especially if you are holding the product and your face is in it, because I've tested this, I've done, <laughs> we do a lot of book giveaways, right? Shocking, right? Lots of book giveaways. There, there's, there's some a lot of, them of books right back on, there. on genetics. Yeah. Yes. Right. So we got lots of books. So, you know, I've done ones where I just kind of like take a picture of the book, like, you know, sitting on my desk, right. Versus me just holding it up a human face with that giveaway. It just does so much better. I, I yeah. don't, I don't think it's my face particularly. I really don't. I think no, but it's, it's like, Hey, I'm holding a this human book. Face. You could yeah. be holding this book. Yeah. Like, it's Hey, here's this book that I love. You. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So a nice little selfie with a book. Even, even if you don't, if you're doing a giveaway for a book or something and you, you don't physically own that book because maybe you read it as an ebook or, or audio book or something, right? Cause we're all audio nerds. Um, I've, I've just gone to my local library, found the book, took a little selfie yeah. in the library and then boom, done. And then that's going to be our giveaway because I'm never going to hold the physical book because we're sending it directly to the winners. Um, but there's just so many little workarounds and things that you learn over time. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think the the DAI has not only helped with how much we can offer sponsors, but even on the, the back end for my team, we no longer have to be like, okay, well, what ads are we doing this week? Putting them in. Oh, they've got to be approved by Thursday at noon so I can get them in. Our show comes out every Friday around 5 a.m. Eastern. So there's no more of that. Oh, once it's approved, I record it. I upload it to the Podbean server. Boom, done. It's just boom. So I have to say, I have to, you know, for someone that does a lot of, I work on a lot of different podcasts. This is my main show, but man, has my life gotten easier? <laughs> like, yeah. It's just so much better. My goodness. Yeah, absolutely. And it's something where you can create campaigns with specific time periods, right? And yeah, that's to, been awesome. Yeah. You don't have to upload your episode when you're uploading the ad. It is no, totally like, different. Yeah. You like can, we you had can select which episodes you want the podcast yes. to run. You can select when you want it to. I mean, honestly, the customization is fantastic. And yeah, if you're working with your entire back catalog and as a podcaster, you're going to grow, right? We yep. always, we always tell our podcasters as a Podbean, right? Just start because wherever Just you are, start. you're going to get better, right? Wherever, yep. however many episodes you have now, you're going to have more, whatever yep. production quality you have now, it's only going to improve, right? So you just have to keep going on your journey. But as you accumulate those episodes, they're not worthless. They continually provide revenue. Oh, it's crazy. Like even on, um, we also record all of our episodes with video as you guys kind of do. And, and so we upload that to YouTube. So that's kind of a little separate and, and I'm sure things are going to change a lot in the YouTube space in terms of like podcasting and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's great because I have an episode from when I recorded when I was back in high school. So it was like 2012 and it's me talking about a very specific genetic, um, test that you could do in a lab. And I guess there must not be a lot of content on that because it's it's very specific. But yeah. that is still our number one viewed thing on YouTube. And there it's just an audiogram. So you don't even see my face, right? It's just our logo, basically, and the audio thrown on top of it. And it's like, you know, 10 minutes long. And it's me talking about this thing. I'm like, so I recently re-listened to it. I'm like, I got to make sure this is still accurate because so yeah. many people are listening, you know, to this YouTube video. 
Um, so it, it's just, you will also be surprised on what episodes end up just popping off. And you're like, you might even say, this was one of my worst interviews, but somehow, <laughs> you know, you just, you never know. And I think that's what happens. You know, sometimes it's like, as a creator, you don't always have that perspective of what your audience is going to love. Get out of yeah. your own way. You know, yeah. it's, it's really important to just, you know, trust that you've put all your ducks in a row and that there's going to be episodes out there where you're like, oh, that one. And it's going to be a total audience favorite. So it's important to trust the process in that regard as well. And I, I did want to ask you also in terms of like, you know, how genetics and DNA research has evolved in the past 11 years. I mean, first of all, what has that been like on your journey as a podcaster, kind of bringing the audience with you? But as you know, new things are developed. I mean, even now, I think there's what like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but there's like AI, you know, doing whole genome sequencing as well. Like, I think we'll get there. Yeah. Like, I it's would, really yeah. crazy. Cause I mean, the DNA is, a, it's a, it's an incredible amount of information, right? It's like uh, one person's DNA is just, it's insane. Yeah. And so billions of letters. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's, you know, it would take one human maybe a lifetime to get through one like it's it's really wild you know that and i'm this is not real math but it, it's overwhelming yeah. oh no no you're right you're right <laughs> yes you're right on it and so as the research has evolved like how you know what has that been like as a creator in terms of sharing that information and educating you know there's there's such a large education component to the podcast as well yes it, it definitely is and I think one of like, as an example, um, something called CRISPR um, has been huge. And basically the, the big papers on CRISPR came out in like 2012. So right as we started the show and you fast forward to today and it's not like back then we kind of were discovering this thing. And, and basically it's, it's something that naturally exists in bacteria and it's a way for bacteria to have an immune system like we do. But the way that they do it is basically when a virus comes into the bacteria, they chop up the virus's DNA and then they kind of keep some of it to remind themselves. Like, so when they come across that virus again, they'll be like, hey, I remember you. You're you're a bad guy. And then they'll be the like, bacteria is like inoculating it. themselves. Against yeah, viruses. basically, okay. basically. And so <laughs> the way that they chop up the DNA and they put it into their own is this crazy mechanism where once we discovered it, scientists like Jennifer Doudna and a bunch of other amazing scientists that I hope someday to interview on the podcast, um, basically like, you know, discovered this and, and, and not just discovered it, but kind of adapted it into a technology that we could use so we could edit our own genetics. So genetic editing now is what I'm talking about with CRISPR. And so from 2012 of these major papers that came out to today, now we have clinical trials where we're actually using this technology to try to cure genetic conditions. So me just seeing first, like directly, like how this has changed over the years has been so cool. And I will continue to, right? I'm, I'm relatively young. I'm in my late twenties. So I've got a hell of a long career ahead of me where I'm just going to be able to see so many changes. And how cool is it that I get to document it on this show that, you know, I can go back and say, hey, back in whatever, 2040, we talked about this. Now in 2050, this is available. And we're going to talk to a patient that has actually used this and has been cured um, from the genetic condition that they were born with. That is so cool. And when you talk about Editing DNA for everybody out there. Can you just break that down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. So basically what that means is let's say a condition like um, cystic fibrosis. So I don't know if you've heard of this condition, but you are, you are born with this condition and it mostly affects your lungs and your GI system where your lungs, we have a little bit of um, basically mucus in there. And, um, that's normal. And, and we have these little hairs on our cells that help us like basically when we cough to get that out. Right. So when you're sick, you know, you're feeling it, you're coughing it out. Right. People with cystic fibrosis, they're, they're those little, like, uh, the, the mucus is much, much thicker. And so it, it accumulates in the lungs. And so, you know, you got to get that out, but because of that, it's a breeding ground for bacteria and other things. So 
theoretically, this is now still in theoretics, right? Yeah. We could put this genetic editing in something like a pill or, or some kind of like um, controlled virus just to basically give it to someone and, and put it in their lungs. And the CRISPR could basically cut out, if you think of DNA like, like a piece of string, it could cut at the point that has the genetic change that leads to the condition. Take mm -hmm. that. And then put in a copy of that gene that does not have that mutation that causes the disease. Mm -hmm. So, like, I do not have cystic fibrosis. So, basically, like, my, the gene that I right, have right. of how it reads. they've sequenced from people who just don't have that disorder, right? So, they've identified right. the gene and they can replace how it, works. it. Right. Wow. Yeah. So, then it basically, you take that new one, you put it in. You, you tape up that string so it's all good right. again. It's like splicing audio, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my exactly. gosh. Yes, like I'm talking to a right. podcast audience. Yeah, so basically, you know, splice it out. You're taking your segment out of someone coughing. You take that out and you put in some, you know, silence or something, right? <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, that's exactly how it works. And so we're already using it for, uh, like, cystic fibrosis is something that I, I think in the near future we'll use it for, but we're already using it for other conditions in this clinical trial. So it's it's remarkable what we are able to do and what we will be able to do with this technology. It is game changing and and not just in in medicine, which is already a huge area, right? Yeah. Not just in medicine and healthcare, but even things like agriculture of like, oh, you know, this tomato keeps yeah. freezing. Let's put in a gene from a, a fish that swims in super super arctic waters and it, that gene kind of prevents their blood from freezing or something let's put that in the tomato we've already done things like that because we can put genes in but taking out a little snippet and putting in the quote unquote correct snippet so that it works that's what's new wow that's yeah. phenomenal and i i want to play a clip of the show which we'll do in a little bit but because it's kind of, you know, it flows directly into this next question of how do you stay up to date on like all of the cool things that are happening in genetics and DNA? Because, you know, like you're taking your listeners on this journey. It's been, you know, an a, a 11 year, 11 year journey, right? Yeah. Sorry, I just had to do that math again <laughs> in my head. Um, but, you know, you're, you're talking about cutting edge stuff as it happens. And genetics is like, it, it's one of those things that in our lifetime, we're going to see incredible changes, right? And things are happening at a at an exponential pace, right? Things are, there's giant leaps in terms of the research and what we're seeing and what's possible. So how do you keep up to date to share, um, to share what's going on with your listeners, but, you know, to get different guests, do you read scientific journals? What's your process? Yeah. So a lot of it is my homepage is genomeweb.com. So that helps. It's basically the genetic news um, and a lot of industry genetic news. Um, so shout out to them for keeping me updated. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely uh, reading through things like the Journal of Genetic Counseling um, and, you know, other publications, um, attending and listening to other webinars and podcasts. Um, but honestly, just interviewing as many people as I do, I am learning as I'm interviewing. Sometimes mm -hmm. if I'm doing an interview that's very much in my genetic space, then I'm like, okay, like I, most of this is familiar, at least to me. Yeah. But if I'm interviewing someone that like, for instance, I don't work in cancer. If I'm interviewing someone in cancer, I'm learning, you know, like I know yeah. the basics, but yeah. um, a lot of it, I'm just learning through the show. Um, but yeah, and I, I'm an avid reader, so I'm always reading new genetic books and then I'm like, Hmm, I wonder if I can get the author on the show and geek out over that. That's my favorite. When I get to read a book, highlight, make notes, and then they get to come on the show and I get to be like, I love this book. Look at all my highlights, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think it's just kind of just immersing myself in the field and, um, you know, and being okay, like on the show, like it's actually exciting when I don't know something. I'm like, wait, I don't understand what you're saying. Like explain that more. And because yeah, I know I if it, I'm it wondering break that. it down for the yeah. listener as well, right? It, it really helps kind of make the subject matter approachable. And you, you know, a part part of you know what the show has done is not just make the subject matter of genetics approachable, but to is to make genetics as a field approachable, right? And in terms of making, you know, genetics as a career, what that looks like, how to break it down, how people can apply. So I want to play this clip next, which is from the show, and it's a very cool clip. You were recording. I believe at NBC, which is a huge deal. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, part of the educational component is that you 
kind of really show what the path looks like, not just to learn about genetics, but to work in the field as well, to open it up to women in STEM and people who are underrepresented. So let's play that clip. Just the emotional part, I think, can be a lot because it's a long application it cycle is. with yeah. everything. It um, was nice having someone that gets it too. Mm-hmm. Like, like Kira was my person that I could text. Like when I was having a good day, bad day. Like I, I texted her after like every interview invitation, then yes. after every interview, and then like thinking through my rank list. Like Kira was my my sounding board throughout this whole yeah. process. So having someone that's been through the process and and knows what you're going through because my parents were just like, oh, you're. Like they couldn't even keep track of it. Right. And they're like, where are you going? What are you doing? And I'm like, here I get it. Yeah, so there, there is this really cool thing that, that's probably happened, right? There's people who probably you know, found the podcast a few years ago and didn't know that much about genetics and wanted to study it. And, and you've really been able to help other people find the field as well. Yeah, it's, it's so heartwarming. And that's when I'm like, that's what I'm doing the show for. When people email in, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm listening to your show. And and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to become a genetic counselor, which is, um, you know, my title um, in the field. And they're like, or they have what we call matched to a genetic counseling program, which is a master's level program. And they're like, hey, your show helped me get in. And I'm just like, that is so awesome. Cool. That yeah, is we've so done a cool. lot of, yeah, we've done a lot of episodes. And the person that you saw talking there is Corinne Merlino. And um, she's our communications lead at DNA Today. And so it was it was so awesome to be her mentor on that journey. Um, and then, you know, huge thank you to NBC Universal Stanford Studios for for having us and being able to record there. They are awesome. If you're in the New York City area and you're like, I want to start a podcast, but I want super high production value. Um, and you're a little like, I don't know about buying stuff or this or that. Um, and you can do an in-person interview. Highly, highly recommend them. Um you know, feel free to reach out to me for a personal introduction to them. Um, but yeah, they are just phenomenal. And they use, I'm actually using the same mic as, as they use over there. Um, the the Sure mic as, as you're using as well over there. <laughs> yeah, we're friends with with Sure. Um, well, Kara, it's just been such a pleasure. Um, before we read our brief outro, what can listeners look forward to? We've got your links here in the show notes. And um, for everybody out there, you know, we pop your questions in the chat. Kira and our team here at Podbean will answer them. And I think, you know, You've just provided such a window in terms of what's possible for podcasters to work with sponsors, how you can package, what dynamic ad insertion looks like, and how you know it can help you grow your podcast in a way that your audience also really appreciates as well. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think a lot that we have coming up on the show is just more exciting interviews. Um, as you can see, our, our show is interview-based. And um, you know, we have a lot of exciting episodes like uh, more recordings at NBC, which is great. Um, we have some awesome interviews coming up, um, you know, in the next month of just kind of a genetic roundup of like the year, how like Spotify does their wrapped. We do like a yeah, genetic wrap. So many updates you must have to do like a, like a this year in genetics. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very, so very I, cool. I always, I always love doing that and kind of just looking back on the last year. Um, because it, yeah, genetics moves very fast, which is exciting. It's a podcast, but also a lot to keep up on. Um, but yeah, so we're just really excited for all the interviews that we have, um, coming up and our, and our Patreon is going strong. So people that want to be like super involved with the show or, um, are, you know, like those people that you saw in the clip, um, wanting to, you know, join the genetics field. Um, I offer mentorship one-on-one through our Patreon. Um, but dnatoday.com has everything you need, hopefully. <laughs> yep, and we've got it here in the description of today's episode. So I'm going to read our brief outro. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this live stream of Podbean's Storytelling Podcast Week and Podcasting Smarter Live Series and our live event for November, Unlocking Success, How DNA Today Grew to Over 100K Live Interview Event. Featuring Kira Deneen, creator, host, and producer of the DNA Today podcast. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Storytelling Podcast Week and Podbean have live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and storytellers from scripted fiction and nonfiction podcasts from across our world and our imaginations. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. If you joined late or want to have another listen to this amazing live event, you can replay today's event on Podbean's YouTube channel and our Podcasting Smarter podcast. We are brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned 
for our next event in December. Thank you so much, Kira. Thank you, NJ. This was so fun. Love Podbean. Can't say it enough. (laughs) 